Welcome to Noon Wednesday. I'm Marissa Wojcik, a multimedia journalist with Here and Now on Wisconsin Public Television. On Monday, Governor-elect Tony Evers announced the new panel for public safety and criminal justice reform. It's an advisory council. And Evers has said that criminal justice reform is a bipartisan issue and he feels pretty confident that changes can be made um, that both parties will agree to. So today we're just taking a closer look at what Evers' team has proposed and trying to unpack a little bit of what might be possible for reforms in Wisconsin. So joining us is John Eason. He's a UW-Madison Associate Professor of Sociology and focuses on criminal justice reform. And John, thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Marissa. So to start, um, Evers has said that it is a goal to eventually cut the prison population in Wisconsin by half. That's a pretty big number. So is that possible? Um, I think the, I think it is possible, but I think we've decided as a country, not just in Wisconsin, um, all of, many states have decided to increase incarceration. That didn't happen on accident. People will, some, some people will try and say, oh, it was a result of an increase in crime, but many studies find that, uh, the relationship between incarceration and crime are somewhat, uh, they're, they're not directly linked. Incarceration uh, resulted for a number of reasons, um, uh, another, a number of other reasons other than just crime. So we decided to incarcerate a lot of people and, uh, and if in Wisconsin we want to decide to uh, cut the prison population, I don't think it'll happen next year. If we want to cut it in half, uh, I could see um, I could see that being done over the next 10 years or so. Um, so some of the reforms that have been proposed are um, fixing the parole system, ending crimeless revocations, um, banning the box, mandatory minimum sentencing, or ending man mandatory minimum sentencing, um, increasing drug treatment, restorative justice, you know, all of these things. Are there any one in particular that can gain the most traction and um, would make the most difference? Um, I think that uh, research uh, over time can help as these policies are implemented, can help uh, inform which policies are working and uh, which policies are working the best. But I think uh, that's a very ambitious list. Uh, and I think all of those reforms are needed. But if I were to prioritize, I might start with, uh, I might start with the crimeless revocations and uh, trying to shut off uh, recidivism, trying to end uh, the revolving door. So I think recidivism, uh, going after recidivism is a great, uh, it's a great way to start to chop away at that, uh, the rate of incarceration. And Wisconsin has a pretty high rate of recidivism. Yes, yes. Um, nationally, you, you do rank above the average. Um, I think uh, some of that is also, uh, it speaks to your disproportionate rate of incarceration uh, uh, um, for uh, African Americans in particular. So I think you have a higher rate of, uh, of um, recidivism along racial lines, which helps produce that uh, high, uh, that high number of incarceration. Um, do certain things like our parole system and minimum sentencing, um, are those an important piece in that recidivism discussion? Well, the minimum sentencing in the recidivism, recidivism conversation is important, but also on the front end before people even go into prison. So the mandatory minimums uh, is what gets, that's sort of what introduces people into the criminal justice system. So it gets a lot of people in the front door of the criminal justice justice system as well as the back door. Mm -hmm. um, I think that could cut off, uh, that, that, could, um, that could make that the so-called revolving door of criminal justice. It could put an end to some of that, so. Um, is our state gonna be better off focusing on reducing that um, disproportionality along racial lines for incarceration or reducing the overall population? So the disproportionality, um, this is a difficult one because uh, 
there, there, are sin, there are sinister ways to reduce disproportionality, and I think your state is one of the states that has, uh, uh, that is actually maybe doing this inadvertently. So rural communities are suffering from incarceration at a higher rate in Wisconsin, and rural whites in particular are going to prison more. So if things continue as they are, that may that disproportionality may take care of itself. I would actually focus on uh, I would actually focus on making uh, making it so that people aren't going to prison. Period. Um, and I think that th the focus there should be on uh, investing in people in communities and in community context. So rural communities and urban communities that have a lot of disadvantage a lot of poverty and stigma, and a lot of that stigma is racialized, whether it is white or black um, communities. Those communities need supports uh, that I think are listed in uh, Evers' plan. The issue will be, um, because they focus more on equity, issues of equity and justice, um, the issue will be getting that through the Republican-controlled uh, House and Senate, given that uh, many Republicans, the right on crime movement is mainly about, uh, is a fiscal, fiscally conservative movement, so it's more concerned about spending, mm -hmm. right? And we don't have clear links between uh, how equity, so reducing racial inequality, how that costs money. Mm -hmm. And if that can't be, if those arguments aren't made for in a way that certain people can understand them, then it, do, it won't translate into policy. Um, and I'm not saying that those arguments even need to be made. I think there's a, a, a different moral issue uh, around equity. Um, is, it, is it fair that people who are brought up in uh, even similar circumstances, if you have white and black uh, or even Latinx people brought up in similar circumstances, that uh, your race still will determine whether or not you go to prison? Um, I think those are issues that are much broader than uh, fixing the back end or front end mm -hmm. of prisons or prison reform. Mm -hmm. I think Evers has a plan that uh, tries to address people's humanity. So banning the box, mm -hmm. uh, that means at making it easier for people to get uh, employment. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, we need to look at uh, expand, expanding voting rights, even though people can vote here uh, if they petition after they're on probation. Um, I think we need to think about um, full citizenship for people who have had criminal justice contact. So that means employment, housing, and the like. And I think Evers' plan uh, addresses many of those Tries issues. to get a lot, it, it a lot of stuff done. It's very, uh, I think it's very, um, it, the the issue once again, how much is that it, it, the the Republican controlled House? It's hard to put a, a price tag on that. Um, yes. But he references reforms made in Texas, which is a state that has high rates of incarceration, but also has high rates of conservatives and Republicans. Um, and so, how how did the reforms um, in Texas kind of compare to Wisconsin? So I think this is where the racial divide is good. So Texas, the rate of incarceration for everyone in Texas is really high. Um, Texas is uh, well above the national average. Um, the other side of this is Texas has built the most prisons, so they have the most capacity to house people who are who are incarcerated. Um, <coughs> Wisconsin is second, I believe, only to Vermont in terms of their uh, disproportionate rate of incarceration. So while, uh, while Wisconsin doesn't have the rate of incarceration that Texas does, it has about three times the disproportionality. So um, this is inherently going to be any reforms need to address uh, the disproportionality, mm -hmm. but given how the state uh, operates uh, the racial politics. I think Texas has more uh, a bigger coalition between black, Latinx, even, uh, even LGBTQ communities that have uh, engaged in prison reform. They also have more a uh, higher immigrant community. So there are a number of different communities that uh, 
are fighting against incarceration and can inform through human story, human their own human stories and personal experience and form a movement mm. to push back against the state. And here, um, it may be more just about brass tacks mm -hmm. because there are so few people of color and there are so few uh, advocates uh, who are saying this is just a, sort of a moral imperative. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this would ultimately be, uh, I think, reducing mass incarceration would be about racial equity. And mm -hmm. that's tough to make in mm -hmm. a state like this. So mm -hmm. using the Texas model may not, it may, it not, may not work for us. It may not work exactly. Um, and you mentioned uh, Texas has the ability to have a high capacity of prisoners. Um, so do you build more jails or do you reduce the number of jails? Does that, um, how does that? <laughs> so this is always, um, so there's, uh, I think you only have about 20 prisons. Texas has like six times as many, Texas has 120 prisons, right? So incarceration is, uh, mass incarceration is uh, your average daily population in your prisons and jails. And so I believe here in Dane County within the last couple of years, there's been some debate about uh, whether or not to replace an older facility, mm -hmm. a jail facility, mm -hmm. right? Um, because it has inhumane conditions. So there are good left-leaning liberals who are like, this is inhumane, should we build a, another jail? But if you build another jail, often what's done is they're, they're built in a way to fill capacity because they need to pay for it. We, you need to be able to pay for the mm -hmm. the new jail. These these are very tough questions mm -hmm. um, because if you have older facilities that need upkeep or replacement, um, that's going to cost more because mm -hmm. you don't necessarily want to house uh, prisoners in inhumane conditions, mm -hmm. right? So it, these are very tough policy issues, and it's good that Evers has come in with a platform uh, where he's sort of thrown a kitchen sink, I think, a kitchen sink approach to mm -hmm. it, I think he'll have to expand the list of potential ways to solve these problems because it may require new and different facilities or new and different ways to think about um, prison reform. So reentry uh, and treating the whole human as they come out of society, is that, does that begin once they're released mm -hmm. or do we need better facilities while they're there. While they're there. So how, how are we going to spend money in this state, especially the fiscally conservative nature mm -hmm. of the legislature um, and, and people wanting to see immediate tangible results mm -hmm. when uh, some of these things will take decades to, uh, to bear fruit. But it's not like we got here overnight. Mm -hmm. It took, uh, the U.S. went from um, uh, uh, not incarcerate, uh, incarcerating a million or so people a year in 1970, now we incarcerate 2.2 million people annually. So we lead the free world in rate of incarceration. Mm -hmm. We went from uh, roughly 500 prisons in that time to now almost 1,700. That, those were conscious choices. Mm -hmm. if, we wanna, um, if we wanna remake our criminal justice system, and I, I don't know if reform is really the work. We have to remake mm. the whole thing. So reform can be, we need to reform parts of it, but I think we need to remake it in a way in new and innovative ideas. I think if we're gonna save our, uh, this is a moral question and a question of uh, budget and budgets and money. If we're going to save money and or uh, our moral selves in the long run, uh, I think we can't have enough ideas mm -hmm. and innovative resources and uh, people at the table. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're, we had a lot of different people who came together to create this many people going to prison mm -hmm. and to create this many prisons and jails. Um, if we're gonna remake that system, we're gonna need all hands on deck. Is there any uh, state or any model in which they have incorporated um, integrative services and community-based services and drug treatment programs and all of these things that are about the long haul but also could be seen as having a higher price tag um, 
you know, in, in the upstart, is there anything to show that those work or that they are, you know, eventually cost effective? I think, um, so the, the, I think the programs haven't been running long enough, but I think there are a number of states, New York, New Jersey, California is doing a great job to have county level services focusing on reentry mm -hmm. um, and uh, reducing recidivism. So they're putting a lot of money into the, into this and targeting it in certain counties over others where they have uh, more people who are reentering. So um, I think this, I think it's not just throw money at it. I think it is uh, a targeted, smart way of, uh, 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 you have to be very smart and there has to be more, a broader uh, base of research ideas that also inform this. Um, I'm excited about coming to Wisconsin uh, and learning about uh, the public, uh, the public um, partnership between universities and between the university and uh, the state capital, the historic Wisconsin idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think there has to be a lot more resources, uh, you know, where where we do research that actually comes out of the academy and directly impacts policy. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's to inform specifically locally within each uh, county and city here. Um, we can use national models to do that, um, but I don't think these are one size fits all. And I think there are pe uh, peculiar cultural things about Wisconsin. So even if you adopt a model, mm -hmm. you'll have to uh, make sure it's being sensitive or, or uh, that is viable for the local community mm -hmm. that you're trying, apply, trying to apply it to. And I don't think that criminal justice reform is at the, just at the state level. I think um, the, I'm forgetting how many counties you have here. 72. 72 counties. I think criminal justice reform is at the county level mm -hmm. and below. Mm -hmm. There can be uh, broad state level ideas of how to do this. But um, criminal justice reform, uh, as far as prisons, as far as uh, jails, because jails, county, counties run jails. Mm -hmm. um, the state doesn't run the jails. The, states run, the state runs the uh, prisons. Um, there has to be a lot of coordinated efforts. Um, and I think it has to, while the state can uh, have suggestions around types of policies, these have to be adopted and implemented at the county level, mm -hmm. um, and I think to that's, get that buy-in. Yeah, you have to get the buy-in from local elected uh, uh, sheriffs and other uh, local uh, lawmakers who have to change policing. Uh, it, it, the whole system has mm -hmm. to be reshaped. There's a whole cultural shift that needs to happen. Yes, it's not just uh, the structure; it has to be a different idea, mm -hmm. uh, and we have to move back from the era of tough on crime, which we're still. We haven't gotten over that. We're, there are still people who believe we need to be tough on crime, mm. and having a restorative justice model um, where we have uh, victims and offenders uh, whose needs both need to be uh, addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, those things uh, we need to be considerate of, and that that's best handled locally. Mm. Well, John, thank you so much. There's so much to unpack here, and um, I'm sure we'll continue more conversations on this as we see more of these um, proposals come through from the, new, uh, from the new administration. So thank you so much for giving us your advice on this. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here, and I, I hope I can come back and talk about this more. I hope this is a priority. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, if you want to see more from here and now and Wisconsin Public Television, visit WPT.org. And thank you so much for joining us on Noon Wednesday.